there's several challenges with unmanned aircraft, with integrating them into the national airspace. What that really means is being able to file and fly, kind of fly like we do in manned aviation today. There's several challenges there. One of the biggest ones is that um, because you don't have a person on board an unmanned aircraft, you cannot complete or perform a function required in the FAA regulations. And that function is to main maintain vigilance, looking out the windscreen, to see if any other traffic is in the area and avoid it. So we need to find a way to sense and avoid, to see and avoid other aircraft. And so this is, the, the main purpose here was to really test that capability um, where we're using something called ADS-B, which is essentially a transponder. Uh, it says, you put it on your aircraft, it says, I'm here. It can also gather information about other aircraft around you um, if they are transponding. And so what you do is you, you, you use that information to say, hey, I'm here, there's another aircraft here, we may have a conflict, I'm going to do something about that. It's called CASA, Cooperative Automatic Sense and Avoid. So we have algorithms that have been developed here at UND, here at MITRE. Next year we hope to test algorithms that were developed at other places. Um, and we wanted to, to evaluate how well they would perform. And so this, you know, we, this overall project, we're really trying to look at that. We have some ADS-B outreach um, things we're trying to do. We're also working with radars um, and trying to leverage radar information to uh, essentially rebroadcast information that you gather with radars about aircraft to other aircraft that have ADS-B units. So LDCAP, was born when um, somebody from MITRE approached me and said, why don't we do this? Um, you're working in this area, we're working in this area, maybe we could come together and do something. And so we started hatching a plan. We were working in that area, it was a natural fit, uh, and we started putting a plan together. Um, and so MITRE started working on it, they funded themselves to, to do some work there. Um, and then UND and NDSU went and, and tried to get some funding, then we brought NASA Langley on. So this has been a process where LDCAP itself, the project itself from UND and the NDSU standpoint has been going on for about a year. From MITRE standpoint, from an official funding standpoint, it's been going on for more than a year, a year and a half to two years. Um, but the roots, the, the, the elements that set up LDCAP, um, UND's been doing research in this area for four or five years. We had an extremely successful intensive observation period. We got 39 hours of flight time, testing time with the with the um, NASA surrogate UAS. Um, we actually have more on, our, on the UND aircraft just because we're a little slower, um, so it takes a little longer for a, a flight time for us. Uh, that was more than was anticipated, so we really did collect a lot of data, um, and you know we had things that we knew would be a problem at times. The weather won't always cooperate. So there are a couple days, it was just too windy for us to fly. We anticipated that, expected that. Despite that, we still got way more data than we thought we would. And um, we had our demonstration day and everything worked great. So everybody showed up, um, the equipment worked great, the people were phenomenal. Obviously, an incredibly professional um, group of people from NASA Langley, MITRE, UND. Um, flight operations was absolutely phenomenal. Um, everybody at UND that was supporting us just went out of their way to make it happen. You know, people who have unmanned aircraft want to fly them today. They wanted to fly them yesterday, and they want to fly them tomorrow. Um, you can fly them in a limited way right now, um, but we'd like, you know, people want to have more access to the national airspace system. So, you know, some kind of approach like what we're looking at might be an answer. Um, but the question is how fast will we be able to prove that out? It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be next year. It's not going to be the year after that. Um, we've been targeting more of a long, you know, long-term strategy over, over years we'll be able to prove this out. We will execute LDCAP and we'll get all these important uh, answers. Um, and once we get them, we'll be able to hand them over to decision makers. So there's a political um, regulatory piece here where they have to evaluate the landscape. There's a lot of moving pieces here. Um, so, you know, this is a five to ten year time frame or maybe even longer, most likely. Now, that being said, you never know. If this turns out to be the best thing ever, 
um, yes, people can move faster. Um, but knowing you know, the, the speed with which these types of things move, it's, it's going to take a while before it's adopted in a, in a wide manner, in a broad manner. You know, um, we're, we're evaluating the, the, the results. Um, and so it's not, you know, it's not quite as easy as saying, hey, we got an A-plus here. We need to tear through and, and, and say, okay, when did it perform well? When did it not perform well? If it didn't perform well, why did it not? Now, certainly, you know, we had many encounters where, boy, the algorithm really looked good, <laughs> right? Um, um, but, you know, before we, we just jump up and down and say, yeah, we've, we've done it, we, we have to give it a, a, a really thorough analysis. Um, if, if it looked awful, however, then we'd you know, raise serious questions and say, well, is there value in what we're doing? So certainly we saw performance that yeah, hasn't changed our minds from that standpoint. Um, but to be fair, we do have to perform a thorough analysis of, of our results. Next steps, you know, we have, we have a lot going on with, with LDCAP. Um, this was our first um, you know, set of, of encounter tests, um, uh, intensive observation period. We, we plan to have another one next summer where we perform more tests, but we're going we're gonna to you know, make the tests harder for the algorithms, right? So we'll take it up, um, take the difficulty up. For instance, one thing we've talked about that we could do is we could stage a multi-encounter. So if the, if the aircraft encounters one, uh, one aircraft and, and moves, then there's another aircraft that shows up, what happens? Okay, so, so you know, certainly we haven't tested everything, um, but this gives us an incredible base for us to, um, um, you know, uh, focus our, our, our efforts over the next year upon. Yeah.